What's going? up, horsey divers? All right. You've got Nicole and Greg in the house. Everybody say hey in the comment section. Tell us where you're listening in from. We want to know. We want to know who's listening in tonight. Thank you for tuning in. We are excited because we have a fantastic presentation for you all about regulators and what you can do to check them out and make sure that they're ready to go for your next dive. Uh, first, you know the uh, drill. If you've never been on Facebook uh, Lives before, you want to go over to our website, www.force-e.com. Go to our tab that says events, drop down, find tonight's event, and register before 645. If you want to make sure that you're in our raffle tonight at the end of our Facebook Live, you got to be registered so that you can win. You got to give us your email address so we can contact you afterwards and tell us where you want to pick up your raffle item, which Ooh, is. Raffle. What is it? What's what? the amazing item tonight? All right, guys, we're going to be raffling off a free service on your regulator. So, yeah, that's a $65 Absolutely. value. All right, guys. So make sure you register at www.force-e.com. All right, everybody. So uh, if you don't know me, I'm Nicole. I'm your social media director and dive instructor here at Force. And we have Greg. How's it going, Greg? It's going quite well. All I right. am uh, over here in the Boca store, and this is primarily where I teach out of. I probably know some of you, but not all of you. So come on in and say hi. All right. And Greg, how long have you been diving for? Oh gosh, uh, I started diving in 2005 back up in New Jersey, a little bit chillier than down here in Florida, but uh, fell in love with it right off the bat and been fortunate enough to go all around the world to do it, but nowhere beats like Florida. All right, and if you had to pick anything to see underwater, what would be your like bucket list creature? Whale shark. <laughs> well, okay, I think I'm a little deaf now. What was that? Whale sharks. All right, all right. So we do get whale sharks here in South Florida. Um, but it's very rare to see them. If you've seen a whale shark here in South Florida, I want you to give me a woo -woo emoji in the comment section. I know that there's some people that have, so let's see how many of you. All right, so um, Greg, we're gonna go ahead and talk about checking your regs. So let me get that PowerPoint up. My favorite piece of gear. All right, so when it comes to checking your reg, we first need to go back to how regulators were created. So let's go into the history. All right, in 1864, there was a uh, working demand regulator system invented. Um, but it wasn't until 1925 when the first open circuit scuba system developed in France. All right, so if you didn't know, that's how long ago regulators were developed. Um, however, they really were not widely uh, uh, used or or known about, it wasn't until 1942 when Jacques Cousteau and I'm going to butcher this name, Emile Gagnon. Close. How do you think it's said? Uh, I think it's Emily Gagnon. Oh, well. <laughs> I only know that because I just watched the documentary about Cousteau on Disney Plus right now, which is amazing. So All if right. you haven't watched it, definitely check that out. All right. So those two, they created in 1942 a uh, first successful safe open circuit scuba system with twin hose, and it was called the Aqualung, and it had a yoke fitting. So we actually have one to show you in person. So let's go ahead. Wow. There it is. Look at this. So it was like, go right over my head like this. I'm ready to be a Bond villain. You put it in your mouth. Oh, this is probably the closest thing to a rebreather I'll ever get. <laughs> Yeah, this thing's awesome. I wish they still made them because you look super cool when you use it. But yeah, this is what they used. Dual hose, regu dual hose regulator. Uh, you know, your exhaust port and your inlet port were kind of integrated into one loop. And all the bubbles came out behind your head. So, And there's that yoke right there. And this one definitely needs to be serviced. <laughs> well, perhaps the owner will win the raffle and get their free service. <laughs> Although parts might be a little hard to come by. That's true. That's true. So if you guys want more information about this uh, cool invention, go to Disney Plus and check it out. All right. So going on in the history, in the past 50 years, all right, it's so crazy. We were just talking about when we got into diving. And I'm not going to tell you what year I got into diving because that's pretty much going to 
put you at knowing how old I am. But back when I got into diving, um, that's when you started seeing some of the innovative stuff coming out. Uh, but before that, before, like when my dad started diving or when Skip, the owner, uh, the past owner of 4C started diving, uh, these are the kinds of things that happened. So the big number or the big year was 1958. The year was 1958. And you had single hoses, piston regulators, and the addition of a second stage. So that way you could start, you know, sharing air with your body. All right. So in the late 1950s, that was also when DIN valves were released. So that's when they started making fittings so you can have either a yoke or a DIN regulator first stage. Um, so, Greg, this also um, encountered the balanced versus the unbalanced regulators. You think you could tell the folks at home the difference between the two? Yeah, absolutely. This is probably one of the most common questions we get asked when somebody comes in and they're like, hey, I want to buy a regulator. I don't really know anything about it. What's the difference between all these regs and you know why should I get this one versus that one? So a lot of it comes down to performance, right? Uh, unbalanced regulators are going to suffer a performance hit when the conditions that the regulator is exposed to change. So things like depth, increasing the pressure that we're exposing ourselves to ambiently, or the tank pressure itself dropping and the performance of the regulator starts to drop. Basically what you end up getting is instead of a, it's more like a breathing through a straw type motion, it won't be as clean as a, of a breath as if you had a um, balanced regulator, which through a minor feat in engineering actually uh, includes machining that allows the regulator to compensate for those changing pressures and maintain performance, whether you're going to 20 feet or 100 foot or the tank has 3,000 versus 500 PSI, which hopefully you're back on the boat by then because yeah. 500 PSI is our reserve pressure. That is correct. So um, just really quick, Gary Thomas wants to know if that's his regulator. Is that mine? I don't know, Gary. <laughs> it might be. I thought it was Zach's though. Also, my daughter, Alyssa, she wants us to give a shout out. Hi, Alyssa. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, what did some of the regulators look like back then? Well, Good thing you ask. We have a few. Funny you should ask. <laughs> there we go. Look at this. U.S. divers. Oh, this is a no. This is a Aqualung Con Shelf uh, 14. Go ahead. Beautiful piece of equipment. Look at that. Amazing shine. I mean, there's something to be said for these. Uh, one of my dive master uh, candidates is uh, had one of these regulators for the longest times before he upgraded to a legend. And yeah, there's a definite performance boost on a, on a modern new reg, but underwater, this thing looks super cool. You look like a true intrepid underwater explorer. <laughs> or James Bond. <laughs> Absolutely, right? <laughs> okay, so um, now moving on, let me go back over here to regulators now. Okay, so we now have these things called overbalanced regulators. So Greg, tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so we talked about balanced versus unbalanced regulators in the last slide. So uh, basically what an overbalanced reg does is it takes it one step further and actually can increase uh, what we call the uh, intermediate pressure on the reg so that when you go deeper, you're getting a little bit more uh, performance than you would out of a, a non-overbalanced regulator. So, you know, if you're at 123 feet and dealing with a ripping current on the Lady Luck, so having to work a little bit harder, that regulator is going to perform, right? It's going to be able to meet the demands of the dive. whereas uh, you know, less high-end regulator that doesn't have those features may be a little bit more in terms of the work of breathing, which we always try to minimize. Okay, and so some of the other topics are the addition to adjustment knobs on the sides of regulators. So tell me a little bit about those. Yeah, so different regs have different style adjustment knobs. Um, this one here, uh, this is an Aqualung Core, very popular regulator for those of you who have used our rental fleet. Uh, you probably use this reg. It's a great reg. It's a, uh, you know, it's a real workhorse regulator. Uh, and what it does here is it has what's uh, called a Venturi adjustment. And what that does is it moves a little flap in here so that the reg is less prone to free flow. Oh, where's our gas? There we go. Where uh, the reg is less prone to free flow when this little lever is in the out position here as opposed to here when it's facing towards me. So when I'm in my dive mode here on the reg, I get better performance. And when I'm at the surface or I'm transporting it, I can move this lever and the reg's not going to free flow as much. We also have regulators that have adjustments for uh, more fine tuning on breathing control, like the Aqualung lever, which I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but 
another example. This includes the adjustment knob here for the Venturi as well and the breathing control in one control. So you don't have a lever and a little wheel here. It's just all integrated into one control. And this really allows you to dial in what you want in terms of the performance when you're diving on the rig. I love this rig. It's not beautiful. <laughs> Blue color. <laughs> Gives me chills. Okay, so tell that you can actually hold on to that because we're going into environmentally sealed. Oh well, hey. So the addition to environmentally sealed first stages and yeah, so you know when we talk about environmental sealing on regulators, it falls into two categories, right? For you know those of us who are diving in colder water, you know, back in my Jersey diving days, uh, there's a potential that the regulator could ice up, right? Even in water that's you know not necessarily freezing, right? Uh, as gases change pressure, temperature changes, so we don't want the rig to freeze up on us. So they include different features that help prevent that, like sealing the first stage, as well as including large heat exchangers. So this kind of uh, stacked number of discs are in here. That helps the regulator exchange heat with the water to keep it from freezing. And then the other thing we talk about with environmental sealing is keeping contaminants out. So, you know, for a lot of the, the guys that we have that, you know, are doing canal diving and things like that, they sometimes opt for something that's environmentally sealed so they don't have to worry about all that gross intercoastal water getting inside their first stage. All right, and then the other thing is the new materials that regulators are made out of. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you want to talk about, you know, materials in terms of how far we've come and you have to look no further than the atomic T3 here. This bad bear is made out of titanium. It's by far the lightest regulator I've ever felt. Uh, Performance-wise, pretty much second to none. And what's great about it is that when you're talking about you know travel, we always have to deal with airline restrictions, carry-ons. I mean, for me, I would never put my rig in a checked bag. It always uh, you know rides in my carry-on. Sometimes I've also thought about potentially buying it a seat if that makes sense. Um, did I mention I love regulators? <laughs> But yeah, it's super lightweight, uh, you know, and with that you get advances in machining. So all of the internal components are made with exacting precision compared to the way it used to be. So you know, it's just an addition to performance as well as overall life cycle of the regulator and just ultimately ends up with giving us a better dive experience. Okay, so now that we know about regulators, Let's talk about how to keep our regulators working. All right, so your regulator is your piece of equipment that needs to be in tip top shape and it needs to be monitored for performance consistently because constantly and consistently, I didn't even read my own slide correctly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's how you know my eyes are going, everyone. <laughs> Another form of you guys knowing how my age. <laughs> All right, so anyways, um, but basically we want to make sure that it's working because that is our lifeline when it comes to diving. We want to make sure that that equipment does not fail. So I'm going to let Greg tell you guys some tips and what to look for uh, when it comes to checking out your gear before you go on a dive. Yeah, absolutely. So like Nicole said, I mean, is there any other piece of gear more important than the regulator? I would say probably not, right? It's part of the holy trinity of dive gear along with your mask and fins. I got to credit Nick Casper with that uh, little adage because you know, the thing you see through, the thing that things that push you through the water, and the thing you breathe off of, by far the most important, right? So some things we look for and you know evaluate when a reg comes in for service and it might be time to think about you know, upgrading or, or replacing it. Biggest one is going to be your hoses, right? We see corrosion on the hose crimps all the time, especially from hose protectors. When you're cleaning your gear, you want to always make sure that you're sliding the hose protectors down and getting lots of fresh water in here. These things are notorious for keeping salt water pressed up against all your connections. And that's where we really start to see the green nasty corrosion that shows up on these guys. Uh, other than that, you know, always make sure that you're cleaning your regulator while it's connected to pressure. Uh, if it doesn't include something like an auto close device that seals off the whole system. Otherwise you risk water getting inside the first stage and then it gets down into your hoses and then you get corrosion. And then all of a sudden everybody's whispering on the boat, oh my God, look at the regulator, it's corroded. And you just don't want to be that person, right? Other things you want to uh, do is get your regulator serviced every year, you know, and if you're diving a lot, 
think about getting it serviced more often, depending on what the manufacturer's recommendations are. You know, if you're going on a big trip, get your regulator service. Uh, you know, it's it's like your car, right? Go and get your oil change. Oh yeah, car has a little bit more pickup, feels a little bit more tight around turns, things like that. Same thing with a regulator, right? Especially something we're breathing off. Um, other than that, you know, biggest thing to, like I said, is just make sure that you're rinsing this with fresh water, checking your hoses regularly and getting it serviced annually or as long as the manufacturer recommends. Okay, so you kind of skipped ahead on me on uh, some of this, but I do want to make one note, all right, guys, because back when I, yes, when I was a younger diver in college, I, well, I still do this. I bite down on mouthpieces like really hard and I consistently, consistently, constantly, gosh, the two words are escaping me today. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I usually bite the bite tabs right off. And so when I was younger, I did that underwater and I choked and I had to surface from 50 feet choking. And then when I got to the surface, I was able to spit it out. So now I will always check that mouthpiece before I go diving. So always make sure to check for rips or tears um, because you don't want that thing popping off in your mouth. Um, the other thing to check is that zip tie that's on there. Um, some of the manufacturers have made their own little cute zip ties that are reusable. Um, some have not. So if you're using those zip ties, make sure they're nice and snug because I have seen students put their regulators in, jump in, and then they just have a mouthpiece in their mouth and the regulator's fallen off. So <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> no, that's not good at all. All right. So always check those uh, parts as well. Your choking story reminded me of um, this, this one time back in New Jersey. Um, somebody went to put their rig in their mouth and do their pre-dive safety check and a baby muscle had lodged itself inside the mouthpiece of the regulator. So, I mean, a baby muscle is like you know, a little tiny thing. So they put their reg in and, and all of a sudden they're choking on a baby muscle. So, you know, you talk about mouthpiece choking, you always have to make sure to check for baby muscles as well. Um, sorry, Greg, I got distracted by someone's um, question, but uh, <laughs> did you, <laughs> Don't choke on muscles. Good, <laughs> good talk. Uh, what, what did you talk about putting the dust cap back on? Yeah, dust cap. That's another big important uh, feature of the first stage, right? Um, you know, a lot of us in open water were taught to you know, take the dust cap and put it next to the tank valve, and, <laughs> and you're like, oh, my ears, right? I don't teach my students to do that anymore. Um, it's just loud and ends up not really accomplishing what it's intended to do anyway. Use a towel or something to dry it off and then replace the dust cap. And I mentioned auto close devices before. Uh, a lot of the higher end regulators include a mechanism that seals it off automatically. But key point is just to make sure that you're keeping water out of the first stage, whether you do it with a dust cap or an ACD or something like that. Awesome. Okay, so how do we care for the regulator? I know you already said it, but we have to say it again. And this right. is for you, Mr. Billy Black. Fresh water, <laughs> fresh water. Fresh water, okay? Please, guys, it is key to rinse in fresh water. And no, your pool is not fresh water, <laughs> yeah, okay? No chlorine. Chlorine still can have buildup in your hoses and in your regulator. So um, what about storage? Uh, what's your uh, thoughts on how to store your regulator? Yeah, so, you know, the reg is, like we said, one of the most, if not the most important pieces of dive gear that we have. So for me, what that means is when I'm storing my reg, transporting it to and from the boat, I'm putting it into a reg bag. Um, when it's on the boat, I'm making sure that whatever it's connected to is nice and secure. Remember your bungee straps uh, so that it doesn't take a tumble. And next thing you know, you've got you know a pretty expensive piece of broken brass. Uh, other than that, once, you know, if it's going to be a period of time before I'm diving, you know, I shiver at the thought. <laughs> um, but making sure that I'm keeping it inside, climate controlled, out of direct sunlight, you know, biggest things are to just like you would store the rest of your dive gear. You know, somewhere where critters can't get to it, somewhere that sunlight's not going to degrade it because UV light is awful. Uh, and there's been that recent uh, kind of series of, of accidents that have been the result of hoses degrading on the inside and actually occluding the second stage. So um, fascinating stuff. Maybe we can link that article from Dan. Okay. But, uh, you know, just keeping it out of out of the harsh elements. Also, yes, a garage is nice. However, that usually harbors those little critters. You know what they're called, those cockroaches. They love to eat regulator <laughs> mouthpieces and the diaphragm. So 
please, please, please make sure that you uh, get that thing sealed. We have uh, regulator bags that you can put them in um, available at 4C. And, um, you know, so keeping them in a good condition or in a good, safe condition, good, safe spot. I can't speak tonight. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the servicing. You talked about servicing. You know, I didn't believe that the bug thing was real mm -hmm. when I moved down here with the palmetto bugs, which is just a fancy way to say Florida cockroach. And then I actually saw a massive skirt had all these like little Pringle size bites out of it. That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, anyway. let's talk about the, <laughs> let's talk about the servicing. You talked about doing it once a year. Yeah. Um, and that's imperative because a lot of manufacturers won't give you your warranty unless you do servicing once a year or Absolutely. what their what their standards are. And so the biggest thing that I can tell you guys is if you get your receipt, or the warranty card, make sure you get it laminated because those things fade over time. And I would stick it in like a log book that doesn't go on the boat or in a safe place like where your passport is, um, some place that you're not going to lose it. Because if you bring your regulator in, uh, that's more work for our service technicians to go out and try and find what your warranty is. So um, the other thing, too, is a lot of the uh, manufacturers do things called parts for life. Mm -hmm. So how does that program work? Yeah, so it's a it's a great program. Um, basically, so long as you're getting that regulator inspected and serviced in alternating years, so first year is an inspection, next year is a service, so on and so forth, uh, they will cover the cost of parts for the life of the regulator. So really, what does that mean, brass tax, right? I mean, you're talking sometimes upwards of, you know, 100, 150, I've seen repair bills come back upwards of like 200 bucks just in parts alone, right? And as long as you're fulfilling the obligation to the parts program, the manufacturer covers that. Generally, you have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, there's usually a one month grace period on either side of the purchase date, but if you miss one, you're out. So it's super important to make sure you keep hold of that paperwork. Like Nicole said, laminate it. We actually had a guy come in and he had his from like 1984 and it had all the little stamps. And I like took the, I took the, the booklet out of the, the sleeve he had it in. It was like, I was examining ancient documents. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and he got his free parts on his, uh, his uh, Aqualum something, I forget, but it was huh. pretty cool to see. Well, that's interesting because uh, <laughs> I'd love to see what that regulator uh, looks like because it probably looks like he's from I mean, the James it, Bond era. <laughs> it looks super cool and, you know, it was in, it looked good, probably didn't perform as well as something more, but hey, if it works for him, it works. Looks like we had a question there. Do you store your reg with the dust moisture cap on or off? Uh, it depends if all of my regs for the most part are DIN. So once I know that they're fairly, you know, dry, I'll put the DIN cap on there just so that the threads don't get all uh, messed up. Usually I'm transporting three, four, five, eleven 11 regulators at a time. And I don't want the threads to get all banged up against each other. Um, for a yoke reg, you know, as long as it's dry, uh, I'll put the dust cap back on. Okay. So did we say use fresh water? I think we might have mentioned fresh water. So fresh water. Okay. Got it. Does everybody get that? Fresh water. Everyone repeat it after me in the comment section. Fresh water. Okay. All right. So next, when is it time to get a new regulator? Well, it's that's always the right time for a new regulator. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, having a new iPhone or, sorry, Android or, um, you know, stuff like that. You just want the newest things. However, we have a couple of things that we thought um, should entice you guys. So, first of all, equipment problems cause 15% of scuba diving fatalities, according to Dan. All right. Sadly, these problems are mainly due to lack of maintenance and improper use of the equipment. So... Um, one thing I saw a question, uh, somebody wanted to know, do I have to serve my regulator every year if I'm not using it that often, especially if you're during the COVID time and everyone didn't dive, they're thinking, oh, it's okay because I haven't dove it. What is, yeah. what is your thoughts? I mean, it really depends. Like, you know, you have to remember that there are wearable parts inside of the regulator. If you've ever had a reg service here at 4C, you know that when you come pick it up, we show you a big bag of parts and then we throw them in the trash. I mean, there's tons of O-rings in there and they just don't last forever. You know, if it's something, if it's a reg that has, you know, been sitting in the closet in a climate controlled room out of the sunlight for six months, it's probably okay. You know, definitely always recommend doing a checkout dive on gear that you haven't used in a while, something shallow in a pool. If you're going on a trip, you know, the first dive in the trip, don't make it the most intrepid of the entire, you know, adventure. Start small. So this way, if there are issues, you can identify them and 
fix them in a relatively controlled environment. And you hit the point about um, when you get a regular service at 4C, we have the old parts and we show them to you, but we throw them away. And we're doing that, guys, because we don't want you to take those parts and try and reuse them. And so that's why we don't give them back to you. Mm -hmm. All right. So another reason to get a new regulator, Greg. Yeah. If your equipment makes diving more difficult or is uncomfortable, repair or replace it, regardless of its condition. You know, I, I see it far too often and I get it. You know, I mean, diving is a cost intensive sport, right? Um, it's, 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 there's no way to sugarcoat that. But at the same time, you know, you can take advantage of great offers like our 20% off trade in trade up program here at 4C. And you can get so much better performance out of a newer regulator than trying to hang on to something that's a little bit dated. Uh, you know, and when I say performance, like what does that really mean? Like where does that even, like yeah, the reg breathes. Okay, inhale, exhale, repeat is needed. My reg is fine. When it really counts, you know. Let's say you kind of botched the tide at the Blue Heron Bridge, not that any of us have ever done that. And all of a sudden you're fighting a ripping current trident to swim underneath the causeway, all right? If you've got a high performance regulator, you're gonna get the gas that you need and you're gonna be able to, you know, swim under the bridge, fighting the current, be like, all right, I've got some gas, as opposed to trying to essentially sip air through a straw. Or if you're going deep, if you're doing that, you know, pinnacle dive for a lot of people to the lady luck, and you know, you're at 120 feet fighting current, I need gas now. It's like that old JG Wentworth commercial. 877, I need gas now. <laughs> Never a dull moment here with Greg and Nicole, right, guys? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> um, another. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, another uh, time to get a new regulator outage is if your regulator is old and it can no longer be serviced. That's right, guys. It's time for a new one. Meaning that Billy Black and the guys here at the service department, they do have a lot of port parts for older regulators, but there is just some we cannot get anymore. So unfortunately, it is time to get a new regulator at that point. All right. Some of those older parts are becoming even more and more difficult to get. Even some of the newer parts, you know, it's like. Yes, we have had supply some chain issues. Supply chain issues, but we are trying as uh, quick as possible to spit those regulars out of service for you guys. So uh, thank you all for being patient. All right. And then there's a fourth one that we should uh, consider. Yeah. If you find that your old reg is causing excessive jaw fatigue, you know, Think about that it might be time to invest in a new one with, you know, a nicer mouthpiece or even swip, you know, getting a custom mouthpiece or one that's made of lighter materials and a smaller profile, right? Um, we're going to show you some of the different regs that we have, especially when it comes to the second stages. You know, if you have a smaller face, maybe you don't need to have a ginormous XTX50, you know, getting acting like a sail on your mouth, you know, because at the end of the day, it's all about having an, an enjoyable experience when we're underwater. And, you know, it's like if you've ever seen Harry Potter, right? The wand chooses the wizard, Harry. Like the red chooses the diver. Ooh, that's nice. I like yeah. that. All right. <laughs> um, another thing about uh, that is we're talking about the materials. Um, you know, back in the day, where's that con shelf? Where'd he go? You know, this nice heavy mouthpiece. And then, you know, you also uh, can get something that's more lightweight, but it's also good for traveling. So if you're someone who travels, and you want to try and lessen how much uh, weight you have in your bag, that is uh, another reason to get a new regulator. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead. Whoops. I forgot. Here we go. And how do we choose a regulator, Greg? Well, that's easy. That's why you have 4C. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, come and see the talented dive professionals here at 4C, and we will get you in a reg that makes sense for you. So how do you choose? Like, you know, We've got, gosh, I don't know how many different regs we choose. Which one do you pick, right? Well, it's like any other piece of gear. What kind of diving are you doing? Are you, you know, doing shallow, warm water diving? Are you doing cold, deep water diving? Are you traveling? Are you diving locally? Are you doing technical diving, right? Always want to go with the tool that best fits the job, right? Yep. And then also you can look at gear reviews. Um, a lot of the manufacturers have very detailed um, videos and reviews about their stuff. So you can check out some more technical if you're into looking at stuff online. Um, but like I said, come in, come see one of our gear um, service uh, people and also our staff. 
I can't even think right now. <laughs> Everyone is writing really funny comments, so sorry. Um, all right, so. Looks like we got a really interesting question. Yes. Uh, from Dean Jones says, I had a regulator dropped off for service before going on a dive trip during the time that the dive shop was involved in an extensive fire. Oh my goodness, I hope everybody was okay. Uh, the reg was sent off for service. It looks fine from appearance, but has the strong smell of smoke. Would you trust using that reg? No, I would not. <laughs> um, primarily because whatever contaminants in there, it, you know, I. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust it. No, there's there's too many variables in there, and as you go deeper, yeah, uh, you know, gases behave a little bit differently than they do at uh, sea level pressure than they do at uh, deeper pressures. Remember your PO twos. Um, so no, I would not trust that, Greg. Okay, so we are now going to show you a few of the regulators that we have here at 4C and kind of give you a rating scale. And if you've ever watched a dive <laughs> report by Greg, he likes to rate things by the way his steak is made. Made? Prepared? I mean, technically, cut. it's made by a cow. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, what do are conditions start at? So we start off with choice, right? That's your, your basic cut. You know, not a lot of marbling going on there. Might be a little bit of a tougher cut. Might want to use it for stews or longer kind of braisings. Then we move up into uh, select. A little bit of a nicer cut, uh, you know, might be okay to sear off or throw on the smoke or something like that. Then we start getting into prime. Prime is where we start to see that really nice marbling, that ribeye, you know, that fat that just renders out and melts in your mouth, nice and tender like a fillet mignon, I mean filet mignon. Um, and then we get up to the top tier, the Wagyu, right? Those are those days when you're out on the boat, it's glass, it's nice and warm, visibility is like 100 feet, it's blue, <laughs> there's no current, the bubbles sound different. The Those air temperature the is not 45. No, no. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of those regulators I know that you pulled out here. Yeah. There they are, guys. All right. So, Greg, what do you want to start with? So, we'll start with our, um, our choice regs, right? This is the kind of reg that would be great as an introductory regulator for somebody who's just getting into the sport. Uh, you know, if you've got kids that are diving, this would be a great reg for them to start out with. Um, you know, gonna have some of the features that are, you know, still on the higher end regs, but still perform very well. Uh, a couple of personal favorites of mine here, uh, you probably have used these either in our rental fleet. We've got the Apex AT, and we've got an Aqualung Core. So these are both uh, yoke regulators. Uh, Apex and Aqualung are essentially the same company for those of you that don't know. Um, what's great about them is they offer the parts protection that we were talking about. So, you know, still this one includes a, a Venturi swivel so or switch so that you can set it to that pre-dive and dive mode. So you get a little bit of uh, that feature there. Uh, this one still performs quite well. Like I said, it's in our rental fleet and a great first regulator. And we come up over here to the core, another one that's in our rental fleet. This is by Aqualung, sporting a very handsome blue ring around the purge, which makes it quite stylish underwater. But also a uh, yoke regulator, great whether you're doing, um, you know, kind of the entry level type diving and then, you know, doing some of the little more intrepid stuff, going to perform well. And it's a workhorse, right? That's why we have it in our rental fleet. From there, we move up into our uh, select regs, right? Um, I also have some of our tech regs here I want to talk about too. But this one, uh, this is a new, newer offering by Apex. This is the XL4 Plus. I mean, you know, when I started diving, I had two color choices when it came to gear, black and black. Now, though, all kinds of cool colors on regs. The 2022 model of this guy is going to have... Uh, some sweet designs on the first stage, and I think it's coming in even more colors. I can't get, wait to get my hands on one of those. But uh, it's a smaller second stage, so we were talking about like if if you've got a, a smaller child or if you've got somebody with a, a more petite face, this would be a great reg for them because it's so low profile. It's also a great deco reg. Um, I've been using it when I've been doing my tech dives. It's nice and small, so I don't get a ton of uh, jaw fatigue. See, Artie knows what I'm talking about. Color is important, um, and it sports this sweet white finish. I mean, think about how great you look in photos with this thing, right for the gram. Then we also have, if you're looking for something a little bit more rugged, 
The XTX50, uh, this is a real workhorse regulator. Uh, it comes with a rotating swivel, which is really nice. Uh, there's a couple of different models of the XTX50. Um, if you really want the swivel, make sure that you don't get the DS4 because that one doesn't, but this one does. Comes in yoke or din, and uh, you know this thing is an absolute beast. Uh, you can drag it through the sand. You can you know bang it around, and it's just going to work. Comes with both a breathing adjustment knob and the Venturi, so that you can adjust your breathing control while you're diving. Uh, comes with a nice big exhaust tee. I used a regulator recently that had a really wonky exhaust tee, and every time I exhaled, it was like I was trying to breathe through chocolate milk. I was like, ugh, this isn't fun. But one of my favorite regs, um, and it also looks super cool. And what level is that on the This is going to be like a, a more of a in between select and prime. You know, you're starting to get a little bit higher. I mean, the XCX model comes in a 50, and then it goes all the way up to a 200. Um, so you can kind of look at the features on each one and then decide which one works for you. They're all great regulators. I mean, all these regs are great. Uh, it just depends, like I said, what kind of diving you're doing. Um, ooh, there's a question there. Oh, no. Yeah, you're good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you already answered. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we also have, you know, just uh, some other mm -hmm. offerings here. These are by Marez. Um, these are also in that same, same kind of tier as the XTX50. Uh, what you're going to see is, again, Things like adjustment knobs for breathing, right? That's really what's going to differentiate it from some of the lower end uh, models. Um, you know, still great, but also just doesn't have as many features, right? Different things like the number of HP ports on the first stage versus some of the other regs. Again, it just depends on what kind of diving you're doing. Are you going to run a transmitter? Are you going to run a transmitter only? Are you going to run an SPG only, right? These are all the kind of questions that we'll talk about if you come in and say, hey, I need, need a new regulator so that we can make sure we get you in a reg that meets your needs, right? You can also see too, as we start to kind of move up the line, the hose material is a little different. So like on the XL4 here, you've got a MyFlex, whereas on the AT, it's just a standard rubber hose. So you get some nicer hoses too. Uh, question. Yeah. How easy is it to get parts on some of these manufacturers in the world? Like, is it easier in some parts versus others? Oh, like if you're traveling? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always live by the old adage that, like, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure kind of thing. Because I've been in situations, like, in Gone Air, where it's like something breaks, whether it was a reg or a camera, and they're like, oh, yeah, we've got parts for that. Okay, cool. Uh, is there a technician? Yeah, yeah, there's a technician. Well, see, he only works on Wednesday afternoon from 3 to 5, and he's uh, on the other side of the island today playing, and it's like, and you're like, uh, okay, so can I dive or not? Um, so it really depends where you are. Um, you know, most major diving destinations are going to probably support most of the major brands. But again, if you know you're going on a trip, especially, you know, one for an extended period of time, get your gear service beforehand and maybe even think about bringing backup regulators, right? All right. And then you've got a few more for us. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of in the, in the vein of uh, our prime cuts here, we come up to the Aqualung Legend. This was my first big boy regulator. I started off with an Aqualung Titan, um, which was great. And then I finally saved, off enough, saved up enough money to get a Legend, and I kind of haven't looked back. But this is a great regulator. Comes in a couple of different styles, so you can kind of pick the features that are most important to you and, and go, for the, uh, go from there. This one is called the MBS, Master Breathing Control. Uh, it has that integrated breathing control knob here that allows you to really adjust and fine tune how much performance you're getting out of the reg at any given depth. So if you go a little deeper and you need a little bit more, max that baby out and she's going to breathe so smooth. Um, this is a DIN regulator. Let me get the dust cap off here. So you can see it's going to be the style that screws into the tank valve as opposed to a yoke, which kind of just slams up onto the face. This one also has the ACD, the auto close device. You kind of see it pop down there, but that's going to seal off that first stage whenever it's not engaged, which is a great feature to have. This one also comes with the sweet blue. Aqualung's been really rocking the blue recently, which is super nice. Look at that, baby. Ooh. <laughs> and I think you have another one. And then we have the creme de la creme, the Wagyu cut. The Atomic T3. 
beautiful regulator. Absolutely stunning. Titanium, environmentally sealed. Um, you know, this thing is just an absolute beaut, right? This is a yoke regulator, uh, comes with a swivel so that you get a really enjoyable experience using the reg underwater. Um, I know everybody that has one of these absolutely loves it. I was talking to a guy once, he had one of these on the back of his motorcycle and it, it like fell off and like went traveling down 95 and like when he picked it up, there was like not a scratch on it. And it's titanium, right? Um, absolutely great performance underwater. Uh, you know, this entire first stage is, is filled with an oxygen compatible uh, lubricant so that it really is environmentally sealed. I want to say the recommended service interval is like three years or 300 dives. So you want to talk about, you know, something that's going to last forever would be your Atomic Aquatics T3 available here at 4C. And if you really want to make a statement, then you get the T25 with that sick rainbow finish on it. Whew. Unbelievable. <laughs> Okay. I really like regulators. Did I mention that? You did. <laughs> how many people, can you guess how many regulators I have? Ooh, that's a good question. Guys, in the comments section, guess how many regulators this guy Greg <laughs> owns, and we'll see if you win. And if you win, I'm going to give you an air fill. You can come into Four Scenes and show the person the comment that <laughs> says what the uh, number is, and they'll give you an air fill. All right. It's like Price is Right, uh, closest without going over. Yeah. I forgot one set. How could I? If you're a tech diver, right? Tech threes. These things are beast. They work well in cold water. Uh, the hose routing you could see. I'll show the ports there. So when it's plugged into the tank valve, the regulator orients all the hoses downwards to reduce entanglement hazards. Plus, it has this sweet black and red finish where it says Tech 3. Awesome. Uh, but these are great as well if you're looking to get into tech diving. Didn't want to leave those out. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I do have a question for you. Yes. But yes, people are writing in. Let's uh, see. Let's We've see. got 12, 10, 9, 8, 17. Oh, me, 17. I wish I had 17. Woo, right. 14, 3. Yeah, hmm. What is the. A real number. 11. Woo! Whoever guessed 11, you are correct. Okay, <laughs> this is a fun game. Guess how many regulators I have. Go ahead, everybody. <laughs> put put the letter N and put the number re regulators you think I have. All right? Okay, so there is a question. So while everyone's writing how many regulators I might own, yeah. there is a question. They want to know... Um, <laughs> Is there a recommendation? Do you buy top of the line equipment and grow into its features, or do you buy the choice level, knowing that you're going to be moving up in gear quality in the future years? It really depends on the uh, individual, and that's an incredible question too. Um, I think that there is, um, you know, two kinds of schools of thought with that, and, and stuff that I've seen in terms of how people approach that. Right? I've seen people buy really high end gear. And then, especially like getting into an open water class, and it's just a little bit beyond their level of kind of understanding, and that kind of bogs down some of the fundamentals of what they should be learning in open water, right? Fiddling with a computer that's a little bit beyond their capabilities while not focusing on their buoyancy, that kind of thing. On the flip side of that, though, if you know that this is something you want to do, and if you know that this is a sport that you want to get into, there's nothing wrong with going top of the line, knowing that A, you're going to grow into it. B, that most of this stuff, I'm a buy it for life kind of guy. A lot of this stuff, if you take care of it, you can buy it for life. And three, you know, you just got to spend the time to dive with it. What's great about 4C, and one of the things that I wish my dive shop did back when I got certified was that. If you commit to a gear package, um, you know, right off the bat, you can actually get um, some savings on your coursework, depending on how much gear you want to buy. So it's almost like buy the gear, get the course for free. And for me, I knew I wanted to be a scuba diver the moment I walked into the shop. So, you know, what's also great is we have an amazing staff here that, you know, we listen to what you want. We listen to where you want to go. And 
we put you in the type of gear that is going to be best for you. And you've got a 45 day no fear guarantee, right? You don't like it, bring it back. We'll put it in something that is going to be well for you. Awesome. We also have another question. Um, they want to know about servicing. Uh, does 4C do servicing at all of our store locations? Absolutely. Okay. And right now we have three, te four technicians. We've got Billy Black, who is our main technician, and you've got Nick G up at Riviera. And then you have uh, Chris down in our Pompano store. And we also have Greg Marvin that fills in once in a while. Um, and in our Boca Raton, we don't really have a service department here. So what we do is we either send your stuff either up to Riviera or to our um, Pompano store. Um, but in Boynton, our store. If you guys watched Facebook Live two weeks ago, you know we have a Boynton store coming. Uh, do you know if there's going to be a service center there? I would hope so. That place is huge. Right? So <laughs> we're, we're still trying to figure that out at the moment if we're going to have a service center there. But basically, we can get that stuff to you. Um, I saw the pictures from the Bill Shack. That looks like Baller. Yeah. So we can get that stuff turned around real quick, even if we don't have the service center in the store. Yeah, absolutely. They run transfers just about every day. And, you know, I mean, what are we? 15 minutes from Pompano and it's quick. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and Billy, he is watching right now. The guy who has a regulator that was in a fire, he said, give him a call at the Four C Riviera store. Um, tell him to uh, call him and he'll talk to him about your situation. Um, another thing about the service uh, they wanted to know. So how does it work when you bring it in? We need to be able to record your, um, what your regulator make and model is, your serial number, we need to know your um, warranty. Um, and also, we're not going to want to have all the little gadgets and gizmos that you put on the regulator. So yeah. if you have um, like a regulator bag or what are some other things you see? Clips, uh, you know, if, if your computer is not something that you want to uh, service, we can take that off. Uh, basically, all the technicians need are the first stage, second stage, and your octo. Uh, you know, your inflator hose will look at that. And we have a conversation about what kind of service you want, right? Um, are you looking for an overhaul? Are you just looking for an inspection? We'll make recommendations on replacing things like hoses. Um, and if you ever have any questions about, you know, what kind of service has been done, the technicians leave really detailed notes so that we can communicate, you know, some helpful tips to make sure that your gear stays in tip top shape for many years to come. And if you're like I am, who's not very good at rinsing my regulator. Shame. Shame. Where's my shame <laughs> bell? Shame. Shame. Billy will write you cute little notes. Like one time he said, did you have tacos for dinner when you went diving? <laughs> was there like lettuce in it or something? No, he said it looked like ground beef. I was like, Ew. <laughs> how embarrassing. So now you guys want to know how many regulators I have? Do I, do I tell the truth? You have to. Okay. Right now I have zero because I am waiting to get myself a new regulator and I'm excited because I think I'm going to have to pick something that we talked about tonight. So what do you think I'm going to pick? Write it in the comments section. I and, can see you in an XL4 Plus. Oh yeah? Well, yeah. let's see. Let's see. Let's see if, see if we uh, get it right. And then I will post a photo with me diving with it and see how much uh, you guys got the answer. <laughs> All right. Do so. we service... Gosh, my eyes are going to. Oh, do we service atomics? Yeah, yes, we do. Yes, we actually we service everything. Yeah, if uh, even if we don't carry the manufacturers, we can try and get parts for them. Um, yeah. and we and if uh, Billy can't fix it, it can't be fixed. Yeah, I mean, Billy's a man, mm -hmm. so he will make sure that you are. Um, it's like the up. Dumbledore of regulators, <laughs> keeping with our Harry Potter reference. And if you guys, here's a fun <laughs> fact about Billy. Did you know that he made a regulator um, work so that a dog and a cat could go underwater? I didn't know that. Yeah. He helped this guy design like a helmet with a regulator system. It was fantastic to see. So if you Google dog scuba diving, you'll see the video. And uh, that was uh, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you guys have any other questions, just go ahead and write them in the comments section. I love that you guys think that I'm going to get all these different regulators. Ooh, yeah. See, 
Linda thinks you should get the white one too. Uh -huh. see? Yep. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I will put a photo out there so you guys can see what I get next. All right. Um, oh, Zach wants a regulator for his dog. All right. So <laughs> guys, let's go ahead and do that random name picker. So let me bring it in. All right. And let's see. Is this the raffle? This is the raffle. Oh, wow. This is exciting. Okay. So remember, guys, if you registered online, you are going to get a chance to get a free service with our service technicians uh, on your regulator. So here's all the names. Everybody registered. Here we go. Da -da 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 -da. Artie, you don't get to win. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, Whoa, Barry, Greg. Barry, Barry, if you're, Greg in the house. If you're listening, give us a woo woo in the comments section. All right, nice job, Barry. Okay, so Ooh, that's a good question. When you travel, do you take the hoses off your reg? Um, I generally don't. Uh, I have a reg bag where everything can fold up nicely, uh, and there's no big like you know crimps or anything in that or bends in the hose. And I just kind of stuff it in my reg bag and it counts usually as a personal item on most airlines. Yep. So guys, if you want more information about uh, regulators and how to care for them or any information about what regulator would best suit you, go ahead and come in to Forsey. One of our lovely staff members will go ahead and custom uh, to your t diving needs, the type of regulator that you will want to buy. Um, and if you have something that's old, like the thing that Greg has around his shoulders, the old Aqualung double hose regulator. Uh, make sure you go ahead and take advantage. I this thing. <laughs> make sure you take advantage of our trade in, trade up, and come into 4C where we'll help you uh, trade in that old regulator so you can get a new one and go diving. Absolutely. Let's go diving. See you guys.